Let's do a testing for how this works. You press the ring doorbell. Your light starts blinking. Seems oh, pretty easy to me. Brilliant. This is brilliant. This is brilliant because now, like, if you're like in the kitchen or the bathroom or lying down and you've got the lights are blinking, you know what's going on. Exactly. And the best thing about everything is that I can customize the light. So I can change the color. I'm pretty sure I can change how long it blinks. And this will be really, really great for me because it will provide a visual cue for me as a person with a hearing disability to know what is going on in my apartment. So are you ready? Are you ready, Raymond? I'm ready. He's ready. Almost. I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's do this. Do I make an intro? You should make an intro. All right. Hey, everyone. So I am here today with Raymond. And Raymond and I today are going to work on something that's really, really cool. So as a person with a hearing disability, it's really, really hard for me to hear the doorbell, which is an issue that I mentioned to Raymond. And so we came up with a really cool sol solution that involves the Philips Hue um, light and then the ring doorbell. So the concept that we're going to create today is you press on the ring doorbell and then it will... Blink the lights. Blink the lights. So ideally, as a person with a hearing disability, somebody's like knocking, but if I'm in the kitchen, I won't be able to hear that sound. It's also a huge fire hazard because there could be a fire and somebody could be knocking on my door to get me out and I won't hear it and I'm terrified of dying in a burning fire. So we can We don't want it. <laughs> we do not want that. We don't want that. And the Philips U Hub. For that, we also have to have access to a bit of a stretch, let's see. To our wireless access point, because you have to plug the Philips U only has an Ethernet wired connection. So you have to plug it directly into your wireless access point. So the Philips U bridge is a nice little nondescript box, <laughs> has the word Philips on it. It's got two things, it's got a power supply, it's got an ethernet cable, it's got an ethernet port, and something that looks like a power supply plugs into it. Yep. It looks like a little wi -Fi 5 volt router. DC 1 amp. It is sort of like, it's, it's Wi-Fi certified, yes, it's on one end it's a Wi-Fi router for the light bulbs. So the Philips U hub is plugged in with an ethernet cable to wireless access point and power. And now, yes, and now, now we get some lights. Time. Okay, so it's got three indicators. The first one's power. Then there's, yes. Then there's one for Wi-Fi and one for, internet. one for the internet rather, sorry, and one for a network connection. Ready. So now I'm looking at the so Philips Hue, right, so and it says get started by powering your Hue bridge and hooking it up to your Wi-Fi router via the encoded cable, which we did. If this device is on the same Wi-Fi network, we will find your Hue bridge Right, so you have to join the right Wi-Fi network. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to search. Searching. For Hugh Bridges. If Hugh Bridges was an actor's name, that would be a really good title. Oh, yeah. Okay, look, look what it, it says. So Show everyone what it says. So we are connected to the Hugh Bridge. All right, do we go on setup? Uh, so we go to setup now. We need our light bulbs. Yes. Uh, yeah, I did think of that last night and then I forgot this morning about putting so it on. There we go. We're good. Okay. So we've got a lamp. No, this. All right. Found. Set up. Found. Then set up. Right. And it says, press the push link button on the Hue bridge you want to connect to. 
Oh, good. Updates. <laughs> Everyone loves updates. Yay, software. I wonder if the app can just do all of these updates when you upload the app or if you actually need to connect it to get the update. So no, it's actually not the app that's updating. It's the software on the bridge. Oh, so it's updating itself. this. Right, it's pulling it down from Wi-Fi and oh. actually it's probably telling it to I'm I was thinking yeah. the other way. That's no. really, really cool. So basically every time you download or update this application, it's going to install the latest software into your I imagine, yeah. Hub. That's pretty cool. That is a beautiful user interface. <laughs> okay. And then, so a light. So add light. So we should turn our light on. So it should be off. Can we change this So we've on? got this fabulous light. We have a beautiful white light here. And Let's name our light. New is not a great name. Let's go, we can come up with a better name than that. Oh, wait. Whoa, hey. it's doing stuff. That's beautiful. Okay, what's a good name for this light? So let's call this. So what room in the house do you need this light in? We'll put this in the kitchen. So I'm going to say kitchen bulb. Or, or bun. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Kitchen bulb. Yep. So. Oh, and we can put... We can put oh. lights in rooms, so we can say turn on everything in the living room, that and it would have nice. Okay, I like it. so let's create a room. I'm gonna call it kitchen. Kitchen. Okay. Also, that you could have also that means that you could technically have a room in the kitchen, and then you could have multiple lights to do different things. So you could have a light for the doorbell, a light for the fire alarm, a light for a baby yep. crying, and so on and so forth. Basically, you could have one room with multiple Philips light doing multiple functions. That is such a smart thing. Let's, how do we control the light? Just off? Oh, that's <laughs> that's off. off. So you are basically and that's customizing on. this light through the phone. Right, so right wonder, now it's just a remote control for the lamp. I wonder how we can change the color. Look at that slider for the brightness. Oh, that is so cool. How did this is this the one that changes color, right? Yes, this is the one that changes color. Let's see if we can change this to the kitchen lane. Ah, oh, there it is. So we click on beautiful. the kitchen bulb and then we go color. Oh. And then that's we beautiful. All of these different colors. Oh, you could have it when it's the door. I can see this when it's maybe when it's the doorbell flash green if it's the fire alarm red flash red if that we hope we never um, see somebody calling on the phone and my phone is ringing and i can't hear it it's flash yellow. white yeah yellow yep this is amazing Fantastic. step one light okay. bulb next is the ring doorbell so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my Ring app. Also needs an update. Everything in this life needs an update. Okay. I wonder how often these applications have updates. I'm going to bet very often. I would think that that's a good thing. Is well, I, if, if something's controlling devices in my house or my doorbell, I want security updates all the time. I do too. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open the Ring application. I really love the Ring application because they, the entrance is this really cool, cute animation. It makes me feel so safe already. All right, and we are going to log in. Oh wait, create an account. Oh, the Ring application immediately asks for my home address. I wonder why it needs the home address. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I can see why. Like, like if it gets stolen, for example. Oh, I can see that I have this vision of some incredibly clever hacker, okay, oh. sets up a bell just like yours somewhere else, okay, brings it to your house, takes yours off, puts theirs on instead, 
okay, and now it's sending video, your video is going to them also or something like that. So if it knows where it is, like, wait a second, this is 385 McDonough Street, and I was set up for, you know, 287 Lewis. Should well, I still put my address? I would, I would, yeah. Just in case. And now it's at the same welcome to ring. We'll be instantly alerted about crime and safety issues in your neighborhood. Let's if you notice better. something suspicious, you can get the word out fast. In New York City, if, if you see something, mind your business. Yes, if you see something, go run the other way. <laughs> This is funny. All right, set up a ring device. So now it's asking me what ring device I have. And I currently only have the doorbell. So I'm just going to click on the doorbell. Yeah, all right, all right. so it's saying that it needs to get a clear shot of the code on the ring device. So I'm assuming, let's go try again. And you got it. Next thing it says to press the orange button. Okay, press the orange, orange button. Orange button in the back of the ring doorbell. Okay, press and press release. And release. This spinning white light means your ring video doorbell is getting ready to connect with your phone. Hmm. We're getting a blinking blue light. Yeah, I'm not getting a spinning white light. Is the light in the front of your ring doorbell spinning? Yes. It is oh, no, it's not. Now. It's not, no. Ah, uh, there. there. What? what? What happened? You saw it. Okay. Okay. It's spinning. In the front of your ring doorbell spinning, it is. Go to Wi-Fi settings for your mobile device and join the ring network. Ah, uh, so what Wi-Fi network should your ring video doorbell connect to? Raymond B. Experimental. All right, so now we're connecting. Now we're connecting the ring doorbell to Wi-Fi, to real Wi-Fi. Okay. And this time I remember. So the ring doorbell has its own Wi-Fi network. So it, so I have a, it made a Wi-Fi network so that you could talk to it. Oh. And then what you do is you tell it, hey, I want you to connect with this password I'm going to give you to the real Wi-Fi network. Got it. Setup is complete. Congratulations. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. C-O-E of little faith, Raymond. <laughs> All right. All right. So ready to installation. I think this is to actually manually install it. Should so let's play see. It? Yeah, let's play it. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is about, like, manually installing it, which we don't want to do. Wireless install. Learn how to install your ring doorbell when it's internal battery. Like, I can do oh, that. you mean that's like putting in the screws in the wall yeah. and stuff. Yeah, right. I think we're well, good. Then. Yeah, we're done. All right. Internet connection test. Bring it to the place you are. Yes. Here. Start test. Start test. Test the internet connection. I like solid internet connections. It has a solid internet connection. Their word, not mine. <laughs> yes. Perfect. And we are done. Let's make motion work for you. Motion detection. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yep, let's do it. Anything with the camera can be a motion detector. Optimize motion settings. Are there steps? No. Is an apartment building? Does your door face a street? It does not. Right, it's about cars. How far from, from your door should motion be detected? So do you have a hallway? Like, it's going to be an apartment? It's an apartment, and it has, like, you go up the stairs, and then the door is, like, all the way to your left. So 5 to 15 feet? 5 to 15 feet. The union motion settings have been saved. Continue. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Um, how often should front door capture motion and see your motion? Ah, okay. Do you want to know about, like, is there other people going through your hallway and stuff? Not really. It's just, like, to your door? Yeah. So then, standard? Mm. When in doubt, go in the I'll middle. just go with the standard. Yeah. The choices are frequent, standard, and light. I say the middle always works. All okay. right. Changes take effect. Got it. If you would like to get friends or family, oh, that sounds that like I, that sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want people like <laughs> looking at my doorbell. Okay, over the internet. 
Alrighty. Okay, so we turned on video capture. Yes. And now when we hit it, someone is at your front door. Allow ring to record audio? No. Yeah, why not? So we press the... <gasps> yes! Yes! Okay. And look at that great fisheye view. Yeah, so right now we are able to see ourselves from the ring doorbell. Beautiful. So step one, we have a functioning video doorbell. And now... We have to figure out a way to connect ring with light. Yes, so let's do that. If this, then that. So. So. Alrighty. Okay, so blink your U lights whenever your ring doorbell rings. And it knows that we have one called front door. Mm -hmm. Lights, we can choose everything in the, pardon me, everything, everything oh, in the kitchen the or everything, in, or just the bulb. I'm going to go for the bulb. So now what we're going to do is we're going to ring the doorbell. It is on. <laughs> it's already on. Let's try it and see. Ready? <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> okay, and both on. Yes! And we've got a blinking doorbell. So now that is brilliant. Yeah. Now that we've been able to do all of this today, we want to thank some very, very special people and organizations. The first one is we want to thank Ring for creating this incredible little device. Then we want to thank Philips Hue for creating this second amazing device. And IFTTT.com, yes. that just ties the whole world together. Yes. Every time I've got two things, I go to IFTT.com and someone has already written a recipe. But then there's one very special person that we want to thank. The first, this person is VintSurf. Yeah. So VintSurf was the person that sponsored this project. VintSurf is an incredible advocate for the community of people with disabilities, especially people with hearing disabilities. So Raymond um, took the liberty of talking to Vince Surf about this idea that I had, and Vince Surf provided. Yeah, he, he funded this. He, he gave us his support, he gave us his money. And you know, he really wants this to succeed. He really wants to help the community. So thank you, Ben, for making this possible. I'm really excited to see what we can do from this. All right, thank you, high five.